You are entering a Maple Story 8 bit podcast zone. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Activate. Alright, everybody, this is episode 8 of the Maple Story and other 8 bit podcast. Uh, today's date is October 3rd, 2010, and joining me is Landon, Mike, and Aaron. Ali's watching Human Centipede right now, so we won't worry about him, so we'll be able to actually talk about stuff. So, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dracura, 153 Dual Blade, and Cradia. And now, these dudes will introduce themselves right now. Um, I'm Mike. I am Musashi from Korea, Guild 8 bit, and level 135 dual blade. My name is Brandon. I'm a 145 dual blade, I think, in Korea in Guild 16 bit. I'm Aaron. My in-game name is IX Door X. I'm level 48 dual blade in the 8-bit family. All right. I just want to mention that Landon's introduction was pretty uh, dramatic because of the background music, something playing on the TV. So yeah. Uh, what do you guys want to start off with? Your week with Maple. Yeah, one week in Maple. Let's see. This week, all I did was try out the Hallblank King PQ, which we'll talk about later, with Mike and uh, his brother Jeff, and that's all I got done. Um, what I did is just trained a lot, collecting pieces of time for uh, our first. Look, <clears throat> trying to get that. I bought my first horn tail pin. Uh, just really just got equipment. That's about it. Okay, for uh, my one making maple, I basically just trained. Um, been trying to get the 55 to get the. Uh, get to the next job so I can get flash jump and whatnot. And I've been getting some new gear, uh, getting mostly potential items from drops and stuff. Exciting. Very nice. What about you, Landon? Uh, well, we didn't maple. Didn't really happen. <laughs> but I... <laughs> After the patch, I logged on, and I had extreme lag, so I just left. But they fixed lag, man. They fixed it. Apparently. Yeah, they said they fixed their periodic lag. Yeah, so... I never experienced the lag. Well, wow. Let's just talk about that, then. Let's talk about all the shit that they added in version 9.0 MapleStory. Now under bug fixes changes slash no one issues actually that's a typo it says bug fixes slash changes slash no issues dumbasses anyways it says quote unquote players should no longer experience periodic lag when playing maple story instead you'll just disconnect uh another one <laughs> the bug causing the heavy metal chair to change when crouching attacking has been fixed no DCing when entering Valley of Heroes, and using Dark Side, blah 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 blah. And another big thing they added was gamepad functionality. They had added a whole UI for it. I haven't tried it out. Well, have you guys tried it? Um, yeah, I've tried it. Um, basically, by default, your uh, if you're using an Xbox controller, your left thumbstick is. 
by default uh, your movement and you can't change it. Um, I'm not sure right thumbstick does anything and then basically you set all the short keys and the jump attack and whatnot. Wow, the joystick as a moving? When I use my controller I use a fucking D-pad. It's a lot easier than the joypad. Yeah, but see, I found it funny how uh, a couple months back I like know people that got banned for using programs like Joy to Key and stuff that lets you, you know, use an Xbox controller or the uh, gamepad to play Maple Story. Yeah, now they're letting people do it. I'm honestly surprised we we don't have to pay Annex to enable it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess that's okay with people who want to try out gamepads with MapleStory and are too dumb to set up other programs. Oh now. And the uh, the setup of it actually, it doesn't like. I couldn't really figure it out. It just said button one to like twenty. So I guess you have to like test it out and figure out what button is what number. <laughs> really? That's pretty dumb. See if they had if they would have like spent some time instead of just like saying okay let's just put little drop down menus. You know if they would have spent some time and put in an interface which would like detect the buttons on your controller like x pattern does you know it actually would be kinda nice yeah but that would require actual thought and planning on behalf of Nexon and that will never happen I agree it's the typical Nexon just throw something together and put it in a patch and if it doesn't work oh you know three two times <laughs> yeah that's pretty much how it goes uh, some other stuff that they added with version 90, uh, uh, some cash up stuff, a bunch of cat shit, some 12 year old will go nuts over that. Uh, some new events. Or Alley. Yeah, no, he likes rabbits. Weird kid. Yeah. Um, uh, some events, I will just list off quickly. Another roll call event. I don't know, it's supposed to like the third or fourth roll call event this summer. Well, I guess it's fall now. But you have a chance to get a bunch of stuff. I guess you can go on the website and check it out because I don't really want to read it to you guys. Because it's. Uh, yeah. Another one is Monster of the Day. On Saturdays and Sundays, players can choose a monster to hunt. Hunting this monster will give you a bonus EXP, which is kind of neat. And, uh, you guys want to talk about in one of those events while we're at this? Yeah, the, uh, the monster thing is actually quite helpful. It's been speeding up my training a good bit, along with the two times card, so it's worth it. An actual can good event that Nexon's incorporated. Can you change which monster that you choose, like, at any time? Well, you talk to her and you can do recommended monsters, or you can view an entire like level bracket list. And um, if you're on, if the monster's not on your continent, like I know I was in the desert place and it wouldn't let me select. No, if you're on like Maple Island, it only has a limited monsters. If you're on some other continent, it has the full monster bracket. I think I'll have to log on and try that out. Uh, let's see, there's t there's some content that they added, um, which is the Ninja Castle or Cade Castle in KMS and the other ones, and uh, a new PQ called the Hoblin King PQ. And uh, I don't know, which one do you guys want to start with? start with the Hoblin King PQ because it's pretty much what we know most about because I haven't really 
totally gone through the castle because it's really hard to navigate through. Yeah, I heard that jump guys is actually glitched too, like EDC. Oh, really? I thought they fixed that with the pad. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't even been there yet. I've like read a lot about it in the past. Well, the Hoblin King PQ is a, is a PQ. Uh, the NPC that initiates this party quest is the sh Shaman or Shamun or whatever. Some Jew goblin in the bottom of the third job structure's house. You talk to him and he'll get you to do a bunch of pre-quests. And uh, 75 plus. So it's a low level content, unfortunately. Minimum party of three, and uh, the PQ itself is actually quite easy. You just have to keep the dude alive when he goes through a bunch of stuff, kind of like a mini jump quest. And you have when to get to the end, you fight a boss. This fucking goblin tricks you into reviving the hobbling king, then you beat the shit out of him, and you have a chance to get some earrings. You can get Rex's blue earrings, Rex's green earrings, or Rex's red earrings, and they all give different stats. And the one they have in common is a 10% HP, which is a a godsend for people with low HP, like Bowman's and Dual Bladers and Aaron's. And I understand Mike has a pair of his, so maybe he can tell us how they're working out. Um. Yeah, it's actually. Helped a lot. Gave me almost 500 HP more, uh, 485 or something. And, and, um, now I can actually Scarline if I have a uh, HP person with me. Cause I was just that far off. So just that 10% HP really helps a lot. Otherwise, yeah. The only downfall is their durability, but it doesn't really matter that much. Cause often I repot is just when I repair it so yeah you can only repair your shit at uh, NPCs that are able to forge stuff I believe like like a uh, Jay from the street or whatever in Kearney City people like that yeah so that's a PQ right so why isn't it in the uh that mirror where all the PQs are. Oh, I'm not sure. I think that's like special PQs or something. It should be in there. I think it's because it involves actually going to Elnath and going down to the third job instructor's house. The other ones are like special maps. But yeah, that is a new PQ, and it's kind of fun, but I can see how it could get tedious. The other thing they added was Ninja Castle, or Kai Castle. Um, it's in Zapangu, it's for, uh, you can go there when you're level 30. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. The only thing worthwhile for high level people is a new boss. It hits like 12 to 14k, so it's kind of like a big foot. And it's kind of. It has more XP than Bigfoot, I believe. It's kind of like that one in Boss. I forget its name, but she fucking slaps you. And you go. And you go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, this boss has two stages. It starts off as a little Asian guy in a fucking purple dress. You kill him and he turns into a fucking giant toad. You kill the giant toad. And you profit. An Asian man in a purple dress? Sexy, right? Is that not Attractive. Normal? Use something against Asian people. Uh, 
There goes Ali. No, here he comes. Yeah, we're gonna add him in a sec here. Thanks, okay. man. Okay, viewers, um, I mean listeners, prepare to listen to a podcast that will stray off from our normal, uh, talking points. Prepare to be interrupted. <laughs> yeah, we just added Ali now. What's up, man? Hey, so you guys are doing the podcast now, huh? Um, nothing much. Um, yeah, so my account got blocked because my email isn't, like, verified. It expired, and so I sent an excellent request, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get it back in a couple months. Cool story. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about the Holland King PQ. Have you tried it out? I wish, man. I'm stuck here, like, making a new account just to play, just to do that PQ. Yeah, so like, you've just been grinding. Kind of yeah. Good old grind. Well, I guess we can move on from that since you have not experienced any of that. Uh, anything you guys want to throw in before we continue on to the next area? Um, that little voting event that I saw put on about the Big Bang come to GMS. Ah, uh, yes. Their attempt to be different from KMS has failed because, uh, as I understand, Big Bang is like the top one. <laughs> People want to keep Big Bang. Like a little event. Yeah, Did you guys vote? The event. Nexon wants to rename the Big Bang. Did you guys vote for anything? No, I didn't. Oh, I voted for a relief. That is gay. That is light as us. Yeah, Lannan, why don't you tell us what like what are the options? I would, but I have to find it first, so buy me some time. Um, I think it was like Maple Story Rebirth, uh, a New Leaf, and Big Bang, and some um, other two. I'm not sure where the voting is. Oh, the event already passed. It oh, was it's done. Twenty ninth of September. Yeah. Oh, who won? Which one this won? This is pretty clear. Big Bang. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of funny. To clear things up, uh, Nexon wanted to hold an event to uh, rename, uh, quote unquote, the Rebirth of Maple Story, which is Big Bang. They wanted to ask the users. Uh, what to name it instead of Big Bang, and uh, I guess the users wanted Big Bang, so that's what it's going to be called. I don't know why they tried to be different. That was a total fail. Have you ever noticed, like, how, um, Nexon is just a failure at naming things, like, like, Dual Blade and Hoblin King? Yeah, well, a lot of the KMS stuff that they changed for GMS, like Kataras that are, are blades in KMS and dual blade or blade masters are different and then buccaneers are like vipers in KMS and stuff like that. I like the original stuff. I don't know why they go ahead and fucking change it. I think the yeah. change ones are better. I disagree. Because if you think about it, like dual blades, two blades, like, people would wonder why it's two blades. Why don't you wear two blades if it was actual, if it was called blades, but they changed it to Kataras, so. We'll see Blade Master and KMS is Slasher, I believe. Or, uh, one of the job advancements is Slasher, and that's like a thousand times cooler than any other job advancement names. Yeah. Slasher is way better than Blade Master. 
Yeah. I don't really mind. Guys, it. just whoever's listening, you know, just for the like info, I tried to like get Jesse to make a podcast a week ago, but Jesse never had time, so I guess we're doing it now. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just avoid talking about that altogether, I think. Um, okay, let's move on to Mr. Spado, the god that he is. Um, he is useless blog post, but I want to talk about the Lion King Van Leon uh, content that's being added into KMS. If you watch the trailer, it's kind of just a bunch of clip art thrown together so it doesn't really show you much but <laughs> it's cool it looks cool the boss looks cool I think dude yeah it looks amazing it looks out of place though like seriously well man I want to train there <laughs> it's I find it interesting that this is content that's kind of being merged into content that's been around for like four years because that castle in Elnath when they're going up the mountain that's supposed to be where yeah. it takes place, and that's kind of cool how they incorporate it like that. Yeah. Um, I think it's like you have to, uh, it's more for partying, that place, because it would take a, quite a while to take down one of those monsters. And like that, like you go into a party, and I think partying makes you train quicker. Like the time passes by faster, and it's a lot more fun partying too. So I think I need purchase partying. Yeah, combo Tempest Man. You're a Bowman. You can't talk about Bowmasters because Ali doesn't have his anymore. You're gonna make him cry. Yeah, man. Good. I'm like so angry. You can't okay talk because... about partying either because he hasn't done that before. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I don't care anymore, right? It's good I'm starting fresh. I'll just get someone next, put on my dual blade, and just play him. I'm not going to put any NX outfit on him. Just mastery books in two times. Okay, so back to Van Leon. Yes. Uh, <coughs> let's, so, do you know what levels it's for? Like, what kind of level PQ it is? I'm assuming there's going to be a PQ in there uh, for the boss. Yeah, I think it's like... I don't think the boss is out yet, though. Um... I think it's like 120 plus recommended area. Van Leon is out. Just about to make a video of it. Oh really? I didn't watch it then. Sorry guys. Is it? Is uh the boss an area boss, or is he actually gonna be a PQ? Does anyone know? It looks like a PQ because you have to sit there and uh, you have to like talk to the guy that sends you to the room with the boss in it. I see. I don't know, man. This lion, he's probably like the coolest looking boss, I think. He looks cool. Whatever. Zach and I like Zach him, man. Cool, Fuck man. Zach. Him. He's so old. I've seen that motherfucker oh. so many times. Man, I like the new boss. I hope, like, next one makes content like that more often. He kind of looks like Goku if you look at his hair. Yeah. I like the models more than I like the boss. The boss is badass. Whoa. Dude, if the whole area looks pretty having badass. that boss as a mount. <laughs> to probably do it. What area is this? Dong. Dong. Castle of Lionheart. When is that supposed to come out? Uh, well, it's in KMS right now. KMS T. It's a 70 megabyte patch. Out in the official servers. I don't think so. It's in KMST right now. Or, oh, no, okay. it is in KMS. That's the latest one. It says KMS yeah. version 1.2. My bad. It's so okay, it's okay. Talk about Ultimate Adventurers. Yeah, I don't know much about that. You can they suck. <laughs> you can spearhead and that. Oh, shut up, Ali. You were, like, creaming over it the other day. You're going to make one when it comes out. No, I, I guess, like, they're pretty hardcore. Like, the if you have a warrior, so it makes training a lot faster if you have, like, a warrior 
a Dawn Warrior and then you make a Warrior, it like spams the, that ultimate that you get. The scale. Okay, well, I guess I'll explain it. Basically, the ultimate adventure is if you have a level 120 Sigma Knight, you get the option to make an ultimate adventure that gets a special skill uh, depending on what job branch you choose. That's about it. Is it the same so as, like ultimate as the Cygnus Knight? Is that what you get? Yeah, so if you pick a pirate, then you will get the Thunderbreaker uh, skill, which would be the Shark Wave. And if you're uh, a mage, then you get uh, gears, fire gears, or whatever. Yeah, I think it's okay. I just think that next one should stop like making classes and everything and just focus on gameplay. Yeah, they won't ever get the hint though. Yeah, see, I think um, Nexon should like <clears throat> focus more on like the higher level content because like the gear stops at like 120. You know, your weapons and your armor and everything. And you have like that 80 level gap where you just have the same thing. Yeah, you're right. They should make like higher level armor, 150 armor or something. Well, I'm looking at Spada's blog right now. And there is level 120 weapons and armor, but it looks really detailed and stronger. Yeah, but it's 120. We're like, <laughs> wouldn't it be like pretty cool to have a 150 weapon? Well, they did have. We have 127 level stuff. True, and we have like an elemental wand. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to have higher level stuff, like Neo Tokyo stuff. You're supposed to be able to forge higher level stuff, like I think 130 something stuff. But we didn't get Neo Tokyo. We got Neo City, which is so much better. Yay! Feel a little sarcasm. Just a little bit. How do you get to the uh, ninja castle? from uh, the Pangu. Okay, so I'll explain it. You go to that like um, one chick, that the world travel one, and you talk to her, you go to Mushroom Shrine, and then you go, you just keep on walking, and then you'll see some guy laying on the floor. You talk to him, or there's two guys, I don't know. I haven't been there. I've been there once. Yeah, two and guys then, um, with Yeah, and then you just talk to them, go into the Mushroom, the, that one ninja castle thing and once you're inside they're like secret portals so you have to find your way around it okay I'm there I just wanted to bring that up for uh, both because I wanted to get there and anybody who's listening who might not know how to get there noobs yeah I mean noobs. thank you for listening to the podcast which you can find on www.apgive.com slash podcast that's where you can find all our podcasts or you can just or kick, on kick by the website and uh, post in chat box and yes you can find it on iTunes you type in 8-bit podcast and you should find it up there leave a review I haven't checked to see if we have new reviews um one thing I wanted to yeah, mention um, was the fucking aliens those motherfuckers are gone and the thing that's left yes. over anyone who did the quest praise the lord gets uh, a uh, metal. It's called the time travel metal. It's plus one all, Ooh, right? But it has plus ten weapon and attack and plus ten magic attack. So it's pretty good. It's better than the level two hundred medals. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, you know, you can also go on our forums and post stuff there. We need need to have it more active. Yeah, it's no kind one's of dead. going to though. Fucking kids school. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. It happens every time I play Maple Story and winter comes along with 8-bit, everyone just psh, disappears, except for you guys because you guys rock. Hardcore for the win. Oh, yeah. I sound very enthused about that. No, no it's just because I hate my life. 
Me too. <laughs> I'm glad we have something in common. <laughs> so, have you guys noticed about the new UI that they don't have trade shop uh, button? They just have cash shop menu and system. Uh, yeah, I think that next one. KMS never has that. had it. Yeah, KMS doesn't have MTS. Oh, really? Whoa, that's weird. Yeah, I think. Did like you guys notice? Shut up, Allie. Did you guys notice that um, there's new stuff like UI for like, putting your cursor over items and stuff? Uh, no. I guess well, noticed KMS. that. Oh, Spouse blog it shows it. It's like a lot more modern. It goes with the new style for oh. everything else. Big bang. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get oh, the new resolution in the next patch. <laughs> yeah, oh, <me> yes. too. <laughs> no, guys, um have you seen the extractions for GMS? We get like Ulu City and everything. Uh we get Ulu City on November the fourth. Can enter it. That's Alex's prediction, All and, the it's, data is and it's not going to be correct. Okay, we'll see. How much you want to bet? Actually, you're probably right if the portal says it's coming November. Ooh. 1.2 Ali, 0.2 Dracula, aka Lan uh, Jesse, aka um, God. Special Tard. Dude, this city's gonna be so <laughs> cool, man. That boss in there is like covers the whole map. Dude, like we needed the city for so long, and plus now we barely have any content to catch up on. We just need dual race PQ, and in the extractions it shows um like the log on screen. It's gonna be dual race PQ, so that's pretty cool. So what is the dual race PQ? Um, it's, it's basically uh, two, two teams. teams. <laughs> okay, you can talk about it, Landon. Fine. It's two teams. And each team gets split up. Uh, like red versus blue. And they each get their own series of maps that they have to go through and kill monsters and shit to get to the boss. And then it's like cake versus pie, where there's two teams attacking the one boss, and whoever kills them faster gets prizes, I guess. That sounds pretty fun, actually. Finally, some um, something similar to PvP, something with teams and whatnot. Yeah, that's probably as close as PvP as we're gonna get in Maple Story. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And then after that, we barely have anything to catch up on, if nothing. We Maybe we'll get some original content, like an expansion to Crimson Wood. Oh yeah, maybe we'll get like um, something with spaceships and. Not being able to kill monsters in your area. That would be awesome. That'd be fun. It's got to be the worst fucking thing any game developer could do. Yeah, that killed it. Hey like, guys, <laughs> let's just fill up every map in the entire game with shitty fucking monsters that give barely any XP. And let's give the players a few quests to do every day, just so they can have fun. No, the quests are supposed to distract there were more the fact that you can't grind anymore. Yeah, if there were more quests, right, then it would be so much more fun. Or like different quests every day. But man, it was the same quests every day. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Just thought I'd let you guys know. Aw, oh, yum. It's because I'm getting old, I need some Tums. Need some good throwing up can be good sometimes. Depends on where you ate. What if I just ate if dick? You ate like a fruit roll up. It tastes like a fruit roll up, right? That'd be pretty cool if you like threw up fruit roll ups. <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> Dude, I, I like that commercial with the guy that touches stuff and it fucking turns into Skittles. <laughs> I laugh every time I see you, man. Yeah, that's a good one. Why would anybody employ someone like that, first of all? And second of all, why not? <laughs> he has a job, right? But first of all, right? Thinks he touched a turn in Skittles, that's the first problem. Second of all, he has a job, and he's black. So what, man? 
So the two major flaws. Should have been more like everything he touches to vanishes. <laughs> Catch my drift. Dude, I, I bet like half of our listeners are going to stop listening to this view. No, some people can appreciate a good racist joke. People with humor, anyways. Okay. Well, I guess you gotta laugh at your own kind, right, Jesse? You're black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I'd be motherfucker. straight rolling 20s in these niggas, man. Yo, Jesse, can you update, like, the podcast uh, pictures? Because, man, that picture was taken so long ago. What? Which one? I'll, like, I'll give you a picture. The one, like, Did where it says, though? um... No, uh, where it shows, like, who's doing the, the other one. <laughs> I don't understand what you're so talking about. One second. I found something to talk about. The only podcast pages I have up are the little images by the title. Aaron has something to say. Shoot. Yeah. Okay, so, um, on Gashapon, they released new items. If you've seen them, they are, uh, popsicles, like little watermelon popsicles and little red popsicles. And, uh, I know they have them. I know if anybody has played a private server or messes around with band story a lot, uh, you'll notice they have those. Usually on private servers, they have, like, godly stats. But on the stats on some of them are, they have 5 weapon attack, 5 magic attack, uh, plus 3 all, plus 10 speed, and plus 10 jump. And those are 4 different ones. And they're scrollable? <laughs> uh, no, they, um, they're, they expire, which is the bad part, but you get them from Gashapon, they're face accessory. Or you can extend it with a new cash up item that they implemented this patch um, that should be coming out like probably next week that extends your items like dates to when they expire. I knew it. Cool. I fucking knew it. Are you fucking joking? No, if you look in the data, if you actually look in the extractions, it sh there ha there's an actual item effect. I'm telling you guys, even though they say Maple Story is free to play. If you want to get anywhere in this fucking game, you gotta spend money on it. It's just that simple. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, if you don't want to kill snails all day. Right, I started in Demethos just for fun, and I got to level 34, and man, it killed. It's so hard to start new. No dot. Like, um, uh, <laughs> Dude, it, it seriously sucks. Oh, and by the way, Jesse, I meant, I was talking about the stu uh, the staff. Like under the podcast page, there's staff. Oh, I think you need to update yeah. our pictures, man. Dude, no way, they're bad. <laughs> no, mine. <laughs> Look at mine. <laughs> I'll yeah. give you like, I'll give you a good one. Not like. No, I purposely ones. chose that one, man. Don't worry about it. Look at mine. What are you like, talking oh about? I have God. a bag on my head. I know. Okay. Um. Yeah, so... I was going to talk about something, but you distracted me. Oh, yeah, they permanently asked it, added all of the mastery books into Gatchapon. So Maple Warrior 30 will no longer be hard to get. It will be hard to get, except you can actually get it. Well, there'll be more of them. Well, this way, like wait, there's Maple like Warrior 30 in Gatch Up? No, in Gatchapon, they permanently added all the mastery books into Gatchapon. Yeah, oh, damn. and it's like... The best ones are like 0, 0.0 something percent get or something. Something really low. Yeah, so I guess um, the more rare ones will get be more common and prices will drop. Like every good item ends up turning out. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. Yeah, fuck Maple Story. Let's talk about Vindictus. Unless you guys have some other shit. Yeah, how about yeah. Minecraft? Well, let's start with Vindictus it since it's next on. Rock, paper, scissors. So, me, He's the boss. Aaron, Landon, and Mike, and Mike's brother have all been playing Vindictus. Ali hasn't because he lives in Europe. 
and he pays taxes. <laughs> what, do, what do you mean? <laughs> pay taxes? You pay taxes. Uh, that's what you think. Don't tell the government back there. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You're gonna go bankrupt. Yeah, so Vindictus bankrupt. is a, uh, the newest game by Nexon, which is by, I'm assuming, a whole different team because it's much better than, like, Maple Story. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, more polished, I would say. Well, not right now. Well, it's more polished than Maple Story in the, like, the dynamics of it. Like, what you can do, and it requires it's teamwork like, and stuff like that. It's a cleaner at the beginning than Maple Story was. Yeah. It's more, it's more balanced, and like a better start than Maple Story had. You definitely have to play it to understand what it's like. I mean, it's by no means the same game as Maple Story. It's a completely different game, and it. I think the people working on it are talented. Cause so far, it's really good, and it's only in beta. Yeah, I was surprised at how friggin' awesome it is, especially the prelog, the intro, so good. Yeah, that's for sure. That was exciting. Yeah. You start off, you, uh, it's like, it's kind of like a single player game, but then after the whole, like, intro tutorial thing, it throws you into the, into the world, and then you're like, okay, these are the other players, I'm gonna go do shit with them, and it's pretty easy to grasp what you have to do, and how to do it, because it really guides you along well enough that you can go out and do stuff by yourself. That's what I found, anyways. Yeah, for uh, the gameplay is uh, it's not sandbox. It's not like an open world. Uh, it has kind of a lineal thing. You get on a boat with your buddies, or whatever. They join on your boat, and then you go to like a preset set of dungeons, like a raid, I would say. And you go through it, and at the end, there's a boss, and you kill him, and then you're done. Or you can redo it if you want to afterwards. Yeah, most of the time you have to redo it because you need to get certain items and shit like that for quests. It has a pretty unique Guys, uh, system where you don't directly add strength, dexterity, intelligence, and stuff like that. You do quests and you gain these things called titles, and each title gives you a permanent increase in uh, your stats. So some of them will give you like plus 10 strength and whatever and that will be permanently added onto your character. So it, it's uh, kind of weird because I've never seen that before. Yeah, see, um, another thing I really liked about Vindictus was uh, how it kind of follows the storyline. Uh, unlike MapleStory does, like, you know, MapleStory, you have like several different storylines going on in the game. When I've been dig this pretty much sticks to one storyline. Yeah, if you actually spend time and read your quest, read the quest line like I did, uh, it actually all links together, and it's kind of an interesting story. Nice. My mom makes the best chocolate chip cookies ever. It's pretty cool. Because yeah, that's. Yeah. What the podcast is about right now is fucking your mom's chocolate chip cookies. I kind of want some cookies now. Yeah, man. Okay, so back to Vindictus. Back to Vindictus. Um, yeah. The dynamics are awesome. Like, uh, like how you can pick up pretty much anything and throw it. And uh, the aiming, the uh, the F button, you know, the little aiming setup and everything. It's really cool. Yeah, you get. You get a secondary weapon which you can initiate with F, and it's either a spear or a set of chains or some bombs or a flashbang. And uh, it, the one I really like is the fucking chains, because, oh man, you can shoot a chain at the boss's leg, and since it uses the source engine in physics, it'll pull him down to the ground because each part of his limbs have different physics, right? So you grab his leg. He'll fall down and act like a bitch because he can't do anything. Then your teammates come in and just attack, attack, attack. And then once your chain wears off, then you just chain him again. 
and it's uh, it's kind of ch cheap uh, if you have a really good chain aimer because you can literally not get hit at all from the boss but it's really fun yeah like um like another good thing that they added in the game was like uh like effects over time like uh the polar bear boss when you attack it as you go into the fight it actually gets like bloody and red the fur of it covered in blood yeah i haven't got to the polar bear boss yet but it uh, looks pretty fun that's what they show off in their trailers Another thing I liked about the bosses is the more you hit them, uh, like each time they have like five health bars or whatever. Each time you get down a, a full health bar, they like noticeably get weaker. Like they can't attack as much, and they get tired, and they have to take a breath. So it gives you more and more opportunity to kick his ass. Yo, Landon, what TV show are you watching? Shut up. Mike, what do you think about Vindictus? I actually like it a lot. Um, it's it's kind of repetitive because you're kind of on like a track. Like, uh, I like the setup of how it's in a town and then you go on your boat with your buddies, blah blah blah. But uh, I think it would have been more creative if once you sailed off to your destination like then it's kind of a sandbox setup like you can go to so many zones but it's still like contained you know what I mean it's not just it's not just down like following your path you know what I mean it, but uh, otherwise really nice game it's nice and smooth graphics are amazing I like the gameplay the bosses are challenging it's not easy Something you need to play for. Yeah, see, uh, I think what Nexon was trying to get at by uh, not having like sandbox mode and having like one main city and the boats that take you to your raids is uh is like they wanted to create a game that you could play on a low end computer that still had great graphics uh, and good physics and whatnot and great gameplay, but you wouldn't have to take up like 12 gigabytes of space like World of Warcraft. It's actually a lot more now. You would know. Please, I swear, if you bring up WoW in this podcast, no. I will... Well, it's it. because I deleted it. Okay. Yeah, I deleted the game. about deleting your character. Oh, yeah, I deleted my character. My character's... And then I uninstalled WoW, because it was just eating my money up for no reason. I play for a day, and then I get bored. End of story. Vindictus. Yeah, so Vindictus is going to be coming into Europe um, in late 2010, a targeted release date, meaning right. December probably. Um, for any of you European listeners. We don't care about European listeners. Why? They're people too. No, they're not. Hardly. They're satanic. They're satanic summon demons. That's cool. Um, Mike, I wanted to ask you a question. All right, buddy. All right. I understand you're a big fan of Monster Hunter, and from what I played of Monster Hunter in the Wii, I felt there was a strong like. I wouldn't say they're identical. But I think Vindictus really borrows some of the uh, things that Monster Hunter influence in their game, like the boat system, for one. Now, yeah, what do you think? Um. Yeah, it's when I played it, uh, it was almost exactly like Monster Hunter, but until you got like in depth and to the point, like um. Like Monster Hunter, you can get with your friends, like, uh, but it's only, like, land-based, so you have to be next to each other, like, on your PSPs, and, uh, 
set the quest and then you go on your boat to uh, your regions like this volcano, blah, blah blah, things like that. And the same thing with like Vindictus, like as you per proceed and progress into the game, like you get to the ice zone, blah blah blah, it goes on and on. And then um uh like upgrading your equipment, that's a lot a lot of the same, but um, before, like how I was talking about the sandbox system, like once you get out there, um, like in Monster Hunter, you have like up to 15 zones to run through, find your boss to kill, and then you kill it. It's not like the pathway to the boss. It's kind of, it's kind of like Gauntlet Dark, Dark Legacy. I found it of a mix between those of Indictus. Yeah, I know but, exactly um, what you're talking yeah. about with the whole sandbox thing. I think that would be good. And we may even see that in the future of Indictus. Um, uh, the next area they're adding when they enter the open beta phase is going to be like kind of like a dark Halloween-y type thing, which is kind of fitting for October. Um, they're also adding the ability to enhance your items, kind of like Diablo, I'm assuming. Like, we add ruins and like I look like fucking ice damage and stuff like that. But I think uh, we mm -hmm. should definitely watch Vindictus Evolve and see what kind of game it becomes because I think it definitely has the potential to be like a really, really great game. Yeah, but um, the one thing that's kind of worrying me about Vindictus is when Nexon incorporates NX Cash into Vindictus, what kind of hell that will raise. Yeah, I'm not sure if Nexon as a whole covers the NX system for all of Nexon games like Combat Arms and stuff. If they do, then we'll see stupid stuff for sure. But if they like, yeah, put it in the um, hands of like, people taking control of Vindictus, I think they have enough sense to uh, not ruin a game like that. Because like Mabel's story now... It's pretty much mandatory to train with two times the XP. Like everyone's gone in that mind set that they can't train on it, and now it's become essentially two times the XP. And it's kind of ruined Maple Story in a way. And I think the Vindictus guys are smart enough to not do that. Because I've seen, I've watched a bunch of interviews of dudes, and they seem well-rounded. Maple Story is basically like play, pay to play now. Yeah, it really is. We'll see <clears throat> in Big Bang, they're like cutting down way, they're cutting down like a lot of the EXP needed per level, so I think that's going to like make it less NX needed and make it a little less grinding intensive to progress to higher levels. I think like at the like 120 plus you'll still need two times cards, but I think it'll be much easier from like the level 40 to like 70 bracket to a uh, level without two times. Yeah, like yeah but at the same time, uh, the monsters have way more HP, so. And then again, the damage increases too, so. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, we'll just have to see how it plays out when uh, Big Bang is released. Yeah, of course that is KMS and America, Nexon America. Uh, they have a lot more interest in making money than a, a game. Hey, sorry guys, I disconnected. You didn't miss you. Oh, that's great to hear. I, uh, I think our listeners did. Okay, so uh, did we cover everything about Vindictus? Anybody have anything else to add? Yeah. I do. <laughs> your your opinion is fail because you haven't played it. I think that. Uh... Okay, let us continue to Minecraft, should we? No, guys, why don't like I why can't I speak? I think our listeners would want to hear my opinion. Then hurry the fuck up. All right, so I was gonna say that you know like. They should um, make more classes in Vindictus because I wouldn't want to play as either one of those classes. It's closed beta, dude. 
do not see the thing coming soon. Yeah, I find yeah, it. Like, uh, the character. When a lot of people play beta games, they expect it to be the same thing as what it's going to be when it's officially released. And uh, I understand that, and Mike does, and I'm sure Lana does. But right now, it's closed beta. You have Lan and Fiona, and that's good right now to test all the gameplay. And uh, the next one they're going to be adding is Eevee, and that's going to be kind of like a mage. And of course, they're going to add new classes. I mean,. Of course they're gonna add them, so don't worry about that. It's still closed beta. Yeah, the topic of closed beta, beta it, it was October 15th or something that they were going into open beta. Yeah, they're stopping closed beta on the 5th, and then opening it on the 14th or 15th for open beta. With a lot more stuff and stuff. Yes. Okay, are we gonna move on to Minecraft now? Yeah, this game that we're gonna talk about next is a game that we've been playing quite a bit lately. It's called Minecraft, and yeah, I don't know. What do you guys want to say about it? It pretty um, much begins my life. Yeah. Man, I stay up to like 4 a.m. playing with you guys. <laughs> That's not a yeah, school fight. Well, Landon, why don't you try and explain it to our listeners? Alright, I think we kind of touched off. Hold on, I get to the fucking TV. What show are you watching? I'm quite interested. Okay. So, Minecraft is basically this game where you place blocks. Uh, the whole world is made of blocks, and you can destroy these blocks with tools, and uh, it's like Legos, and there's two different modes, it's creative where you can just place and destroy blocks without anything, it's really quick, and that's just for making like gigantic castles and all kinds of shit, and then there's survival mode, which is really what the game is about, and basically in survival mode, you're thrown into the world, and you basically, you have to figure out there's nothing, there's no missions really. You just try and survive, and uh, when night falls, monsters come out, and you have to try and survive. Hence, survival mode. And, uh, they have, uh, this online survival mode and uh, single player survival mode. And the game's only in alpha right now, it's not even in beta, so. And it still has a lot of features, and I'm curious to see all the features when it's a completed game. It, it's really just like a kickback game, like no stress at all. Once you pay, you're done paying, and good to go. Price is 9 euros or 11 US dollars. Not sure how much that is in Canadian dollars. 14.58. It changes yeah. every day. Well, if anybody is like wondering, oh, is, uh, should I buy Minecraft in Alpha? The answer is simply yes, you should, because it's so much fun. And once you start playing it, you will lose yourself in your own little world and keep going and going, and you'll have a beard by the time you're done playing. Dude, seriously, I spent so much time playing that game. I am like. I have to keep my away from that, man. I stay up to like 4 a.m. playing it with you guys, and I, and then I wake up for, s and then I have like three hours of sleep, and then I wake up at seven o'clock just to go to school. I'm like, wow, you guys are like <laughs> killing me. <laughs> yeah, Minecraft. It's an indie game made by one guy named Notch. One guy, and he has like the fastest development of like any game studio that I can think of. Well, not right now, anyways. <clears throat> yeah, but, uh... Yeah. Sorry, you're on. Um, yeah, uh... He's, like, trying to get his company or whatever started. His, uh, game development company started, so he's kind of busy right now. That's why he hasn't released much. Go on, Mike. 
was going to say, like, don't let the graphics throw you off at first. Like, it's a very creative game and very fun. And you just have to have to play it to get yeah. past the fact of the graphics. You're only really limited to your imagination. That's the only thing. Yeah, let me put this into perspective for you people. He sells uh, 7,900 copies a day. In yeah. alpha. Yeah, it's been getting a lot of m attention pretty much like worldwide, everywhere. It's pretty fucking popular. Okay, so let's talk about yeah, some man. features that this game has. Well, you can play with friends. Uh, we all like kind of created our own city. Um, it's really fun if you play with friends. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, infinite map generation. Um, as much as your host server can like hold up to before the computer crashes. And uh, I really like the fact that to build tools, you have to make your materials look like the tools. That's one of the small little perks I like. Yes, Mike's talking about the crafting feature. You want to explain what that is, Mike? Um, so like, crafting it all is like pickaxes, shovels, axes, hoes, uh, swords. Um, like, those are just some of the many, many things you can craft uh, to just like build whatever you want. Um, and you have three by three blocks right now, um, and inside of that you, you want to make something, you just take the materials, like two sticks and three stone on top, like across the top, and that makes a pickaxe, and, uh, you just play around with it for a while, and you just start making all these random things that help you go faster, and build more extravagant things. Yeah. Is a single player survival, is that free for people? Single player survival, um, you still have to pay for it. But uh, you can play the original survival which doesn't have crafting. Yeah, and you can have a pirated version. But that does not get you multiplayer. I don't recommend pirating it because support him because <laughs> he's actually he actually cares about the customers. Yeah. And the players. It's a good game. You should definitely buy it. Don't pirate it. Yeah, I played a pirated um version for a while before uh I got the game. Well Landon generously bought me the game. But um Single player and multiplayer are just whole two whole different worlds. Single player is like it's more polished and a lot of the things work on it, like monsters and everything actually work. But multiplayer monsters don't work, but it's a lot more fun to play with friends and uh, you know set up your own little city, you know, and you can open up little shops and sell things and whatnot. Yes, in the multiplayer version, there is no like currency, there's no miso. Basically, you trade, it's like the old days, like you trade pelts, basically. You barter. Yeah. There, yeah. And another thing to the creativity is you can customize your, uh, your player who you walk around with with anything you want. You can go design your own thing and paint if you wanted to. It's another thing I like. Yeah, your skin. You can make your own skin. It can be like anything you want. I think Aaron had this one skin where he's just a naked dude with a wing. <laughs> yeah, it was a naked dude with a giganto wing. <laughs> wing. <laughs> Talk to Lad and he'll make you whatever skin you want. You can also have texture packs, um, 
tell people how you do that and how you like uh, upload it because I need to know <laughs> how to uh, put it on. I just I'm it. not going to explain it on the podcast because it's actually really difficult to do. But yeah, you can okay. like change all the textures, like how the grass looks in the game. You can make it how you want to look at it if you really wanted to put the work into yeah, it. Yeah, I actually took a, I installed I'm a texture pack. Yeah. And uh, are you looking at the video I uploaded? Yeah, I'm looking at it now, one views. Yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I installed a texture pack and made a video of City17, which is our city on Baron's a Bullshit server. So I'll put the link yeah, on the podcast page so you guys can check out what a texture pack really is. And, yeah. Yeah, teach me how to do it later, please. That looks nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but <clears throat> the cool thing is, is like, it's like just thinking of like fun things to do. Like, okay, say so you built your city, you know, there's nothing really else you can think about building. Like, you just come up with some amazing ideas. Like, uh, today, uh, on the multiplayer servers, health doesn't work. So basically, uh, you can't die but um your if you have armor your armor will take damage and I thought up an idea cuz I was uh, playing around uh you could have like bows and arrows and uh shoot them at people and when they get hit their armor will go down and you could play like a uh, paintball or shoot them kind of game yeah I'd be down for that if we found that bows and uh you can also like like, uh, we have an idea for a security, like, alarm system for the town when, uh, monsters actually work. Like, say, there's, like, a creeper, which is an exploding monster, so it's not good to, like, blow up your stuff, but, uh, say, like, we have a watch-out tower. Say, whoever's on watch duty sees it, they can flip a switch, and small, like, little lights in everybody's house will go on, telling them, you know, to be alert that there's something going on. Yeah, what Aaron's talking about is a feature called redstone. Basically, you go out and you mine this rare mineral, and you can place it on the ground and basically acts like circuits on a motherboard, but inside the game. And people have literally created processors and <coughs> password doors and calculators <laughs> inside the game. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, and that, that, that's like pretty much what Minecraft is about, is like incorporating your thoughts into the game. You know, not just building things, but also like doing things and creating awesomeness. I like the idea where you start out from nothing. Like, you start out and you have absolutely nothing in your inventory. You have nothing around you. You don't have a shelter. And you go out and you figure out, oh, wait a second, I can punch shit. So I'm going to punch a tree and cut it down and take the fucking stumps. And then you take the stumps and you turn them into planks and you're like, whoa, that's pretty amazing. And then you make sticks and you're like, oh shit, I made sticks. I wonder if I can make something else with this. And then you start to make wooden tools. And you're like, god damn. And then you start mining and then you get stone and you make stone tools. And you mine deeper and you find iron and you make iron tools. It just goes on and on. It's fucking epic. And then you like eventually yeah. build a huge city. And then you can use like buckets and whatnot and make fountains and lava fat and uh, obsidian factories and stuff with lava and water. Um, obsidian is like a solid black rock block in the game. And you can't build tools out of it and with the best pickaxe, which is a diamond pickaxe, it takes like 20 seconds to mine one block, which is ridiculously long. Yeah, it's so yeah, in Minecraft, you can literally like disassemble the world if you wanted to and rebuild it how you want it to look. You can basically do anything. You definitely gotta try it. Better yet, just go ahead and buy Alpha because you won't regret it.
you will if you have, like start having no life like me. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Like, well, talking where about did it. all those hours go? Yeah, talk about it. I just want to go play it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talking about it made me play some on it now. <laughs> oh, you're on it right now? <laughs> Check out my speed. Yeah, man. I'm playing. Can you upload the texture pack, please? I want to download it. Calm down, dude. Okay, so, uh, back to Minecraft. I have, like, uh, mods that people can get for their online servers, and they have, like, PvP servers where you can, like, kill each other. They have, like, uh, RuneCraft, which is pretty crazy, which they have, like, a whole summoning system where you can, like, have, like, a, like, uh, an axe that will just blow away all the leaves on a, uh, tree and, uh, all kinds of cool stuff that you can do. Like, uh, there's this one server that I was just playing on. It's a TNT server. And basically, you start off with a uh, full inventory and everything of TNT, and you just go and blow up the whole world. That's all it is? Yeah. People tried building houses, but, like, they're, like, in pieces, because they blew them all up. Oh, yeah, there's just one major problem in the game. It's called griefing. It's something that Aaron specializes in. I think Aaron should explain. Oh, yeah, you're the one walking around in my house with flint, trying to burn my wooden house down. No, that ain't me. Okay, I do admit I did start one forest fire, but that was just because I didn't feel like messing with leaves. But I replanted I like... all those trees. You also didn't take down I your like how it's today. Today's mic. Go ahead. Okay, what were we saying about Mike? Well, <laughs> I was gonna say, I like how as soon as Mike said that he's playing it right now, all of us logged in. <laughs> Me, Aaron, and Mike are logged in to play Minecraft right now. I should log <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, man. <laughs> I would, but I don't want to take the risk for, to crash Audacity and lose all of our podcast. Which, by the way, I think is nearing an end. No. Yeah, but uh, one thing I want to mention. Is uh the reason we haven't been playing Maple Story so much is because it's like uh it's like this boring period that you have in between exciting patches. You know, Dual Blade came out, Dual Blade craze is cooling down, nothing really out. Everybody's tired of the you know shitty updates, the aliens and whatnot, and uh, we're just waiting for Big Bang. Once Big Bang comes out, it'll be 8 bit all the way. I'm no, good. I think it's just you. I think all these patches are very exciting, and I enjoy each one of them. Each one of them offers a special. You enjoy like crappy XP. You're full of shit. Yeah, out. I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Asian. Dude, I'm not Asian. Who built this huge house here? I don't like it. It's not a house. It's the bank, Artard. Don't fucking bash my bank, it's a huge motherfucker. Bank. Doesn't even have floors, man. It's just a like, huge well, thing. It's obviously not no done. stairs or anything. That's that's his building stuff. Okay, fine. Okay, okay, okay. I should build something then. I was I going for like a modern thing. I'm like, I'm just designing the area, landscaping it. Well, if we're just talking about that, then I think this is the end of episode eight. We'll think of a title. You, can you guys think of one right now? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm crack the three. I like Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron joins us, and this is my first podcast. No, I think that's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Aaron actually uh, talked about Reject me. Yeah, you did a good job. I like it. Yeah. Yo, um, uh, Mike. Mike is quiet as usual, but that's okay. Landon, how's your mic? Uh-uh. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, no. Uh, how's your mom? Oh, ask him. <laughs> Jesse, how's your mom? My mom? She's good, man. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Thanks. Tell her I'm sorry for last night. Okay. Is she pregnant or something? Guys. Yeah, no, you scared her so guys. much when you dropped your pants. Guess what? Guys, come on. Guys, guys, guys. Listen up. Okay, guys. Are you listening? Guys. Not really. Guys. Shut up. 
Do you hear me, guys? Are you listening? Guys, guys, guys. Shut up, yeah. oh, man. Guys, 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 guys. Just, just listen up, guys, 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 guys. Listen up, okay? All right, so this concludes the end of MapleStory 8-Bit Podcast. Or MapleStory, yeah, MapleStory 8-Bit Podcast, Episode 8. Man, that's a tongue full. Episode 9 will be along the way. All right, thanks, Aaron, for joining us on this, your first podcast. You did good, man. Thumbs up. Um, this is Drakura signing off. And you guys have to say bye too. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. And I'll say bye for Ali, who is periodically kicked for being obnoxious. <laughs> okay, bye, Ali. Okay, bye, Jesse. <laughs>